Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a video about my A6000 and what camera settings I use because I got a lot of comments on Instagram and on YouTube about what camera settings I use for my photo shoots. And yeah, I wanted to show you my camera settings and how the A6000 works. And yeah, I would say we get straight into the video. Okay guys, so now we're in the menu of the A6000 and if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. And I'm going to try to explain this as easy as I can. And I also have this little thing here to show you some things, how things work with this camera. And to begin with, for image size, I leave my Sony a6000 at 24 megapixels. You can also choose 12 megapixel or 6 megapixel. But I always leave it as 24 megapixel because you always want the best out of your camera. And you can also see here, this camera can shoot 24 megapixels. So I think the best idea is always to also use that. So especially on photo shoots, you want the best quality. So I always leave it as 24 megapixel. And for aspect ratio, you have two options here. You have three by two or 16 by nine. And I leave it as three by two because I think that pictures with 16 by nine are a bit too narrow and all my images on my Instagram and in my YouTube videos are always three by two. It just makes me feel more comfortable because I know the pictures are going to look a bit better because having narrow pictures can be very annoying. So that's why I always leave it at three by two. And the next one is quality and quality is actually really simple. So you have four choices here. You have raw, you have raw and JPEG, you have fine and standard. So WAR is basically uncompressed files and WAR and JPEG is where you shoot both at the same time. So for example, when I do a photo, basically we did a WAR and JPEG file now. So when you switch your SD card to your computer, you will have two files and it has a lot of advantages because you can, for example, use the WAR files to work on for Lightroom, for example, and the JPEG files, you can like send your clients. And it's a really good idea to shoot with both because then you have more variety. And fine is JPEG basically. And standard is honestly, I've never used it, but it's probably something like JPEG, uh, maybe with less quality, but I do always want JPEG and it gives you honestly also more security because you can always see what picture you did and you have two pictures at the same time. And for the next option, we have file format. And file format is basically in what file format you shoot. You have XAVCS, you have AVCHD and MP4. And probably MP4 sounds familiar. MP4 is like when you upload a video to YouTube, usually it's an MP4. And with Sony, you have also the option to shoot XAVCS. And it's like a really good format and you have better quality. And that's why I always, when I do video, I shoot XAVCS. But when you shoot XAVCS, you also need at least a 64 gigabyte memory card. Because when I got this camera, I had like a 16 gigabyte memory card and I wasn't able to shoot XAVCS. So um, because your uh, file format, it writes also more on your SD card. So it needs that extra space. And on the next page, you have record settings. And it's actually also simple to explain. So you have 60 frames per second, you have 30 frames per second, and you have 24 frames per second. And for example, I always shoot 60 frames per second. So you're also able to do like slow motion. And you can also do 30 frames per second. This is more cinematic. And 24 frames per second is like really cinematic. So you can like choose uh, the Sony, uh, A6000 is able to shoot 60 frames per second. So I always shoot 60 frames per second. You can then do slow motion and it can be very handy. For example, if you do B-roll, so I always leave it like this. And for drive mode, drive mode is really interesting because you have like multiple options here. For example, you have single shooting. Single shooting is where you can, for example, do a picture and it just does one picture. And you can also change it when you press on this button right here. So here you can go back to drive mode and you can also choose continue shooting. And with continue shooting, 
you can do multiple pictures at the same time. And that can be very good, for example, if you shoot wildlife or sports photography. So this is good if you really want to capture the moment. I do it with photo shoots a lot because when the model laughs, for example, you can really capture the moment. And uh, it also has some disadvantages. Your buffer gets crazy. So it takes a lot of time to go back to the menu. For example, I can show you if you do, if you do a lot of pictures, uh, you cannot get it, go straight back to the menu. So when you shoot uh, with high mode or uh, I would say uh, continue shooting, you have to wait a second. So you have to be a bit patient, uh, but it's something uh, which is still worth it because continue shooting allows you to do more pictures. And my philosophy is always the more pictures, the better. So um, you are also able to do self timer. And with self timer, basically you can do press on the button and it takes two seconds to do a picture. And you can also do, for example, 10 seconds. So this is good for selfies, for example. Um, but the A6000 has no flip up screen, so it can be a bit, uh, yeah, a struggle. So it's something also which the A6000 lacks. It has no flip up screen. To go back to the menu, you have to go here on menu and then you have flash mode. And flash mode is also, um, yeah, something special about the A6000 because the A6000 has a flash. For example, when you press here on flash, your flip up flash comes out and you can, for example, do a photo with your flash. Uh, yeah, it is, of course, a good flash. Uh, it's not the best one in the world. And yeah, it, it didn't really come handy to me in at least half a year because now I have a different flash I use for my hot shoe mount. Um, but if you are into flash photography and you want to get to know the basics, it's definitely good that you have a nice to have on your A6000 with a nice little flash. And you can also do like, for example, full flash, your slow flash, rear flash. You can choose between these ones and see which one you like most. I personally use it always as full flash because you want to capture the whole picture. And next we have red eye reduction. And I usually leave this as off because I never had a picture where there was red eyes or something. So I usually leave this as off, but you can of course put it also on, on, but I leave it as off. And for focus mode, this is really interesting. And uh, your A6000 have four different, or even more different modes. So I can show you, for example, the first one is single shot AF. So basically when you move your camera, um, your camera focuses always to something. Now, now it's a bit different, but um, now we have single um, shot mode. So you have to, wait a second so let me go back um yeah if you go for automatic af uh, i've never used this before the, so basically the camera decides but i always go for continuous af because then the, if you can move your camera and the camera always follows the object and i really like this one because when you do like photo shoots you always want the camera to focus the model so i, I always leave it as afc but the thing is with AFC is that your battery will also drain faster because um, the camera works more. So uh, if you go for this uh, mode, uh, make sure you have enough batteries with you. So a little tip by the side. And here you have DMF. I, I personally use manual focus if I go for manually. So you can like twist um, your focusing ring and you can just adjust and you have a color here. You can choose between multiple colors, for example, yellow, red and uh, I can show you in a second. So let's go back into the menu. So on the third side, we have focus area. Here you have uh, focus area right, you have zone, um, center and flexible spot. And for example, when I do video, I like to put it as white because let me go back to the menu. Uh, that means the whole um, display, the whole view is like able to be focused. With zone, you only have the center and uh, with let me go back with center you have really the center of the center can be very useful if you do product photography but i honestly leave it always as white because uh, if you do video it's much better um, to always have the white angles <laughs> so 
But when I do portraits, and here you see the single uh, focus one, where you have a really tiny area which you focus. This is where I, for example, when I do photos, I put the head of the model. So it's good for portrait. Um, but now you can see it's not focusing exactly. So you have to, here you go. So <laughs> now uh, you can um, see how this works. What you can also do is, for example, go back to the menu, go into focus area, and you can switch the focusing point. So now you see again, so now it's focusing right here. And what you can also do, and this is really cool, you can go back to the menu, you can decide how large the flexible spot is. For example, now it's a bit larger, but personally, I always leave it as, um, let me show you again, small, because then you can like focus the eyes. And this is just my preference, but I can show you again so you can see. So now it's in the middle and it's focused again. So this is how the flexible spot works. Are there some more? No, not really. So let's go back to the menu. So focus illuminator is where you have a red or like an orange dot. I always leave it as off because you don't really want that illuminator because it's a bit of distracting also, uh, just to let you know. And um, yeah, autofocus drive speed, so you can choose it fast, normal or slow. This is how fast your autofocus is. And I always put it as fast because when you do photo shoots, you want to have a fast autofocus. But when you do, for example, videos or like B-roll, you can of course do it normal or slow. Can be handy if you need it for a specific thing. So just to let you know. And um, yeah, I usually leave everything here as it is. Exposure step, I leave it as 0.3. Um, yeah. For ISO, this is really interesting. So um, ISO is basically your photo boost. For example, this is ISO 100. And you can also raise it to like ISO 1000 and the camera goes until it goes really high. So as you can see, the ISO gets crazy. And if you raise the ISO or ISO, your picture also becomes more grainy. So for photo shoots, I usually leave it as 250 or 400. I usually don't go higher because the more you raise your eyes out, the grainier your pictures become. The A6000 is a great camera, but I feel like if you go over 1000, your eyes out becomes really grainy. So usually I stick around 400 and then you're good to go. And for the next section, we have metering mode and I leave it as multi. Uh, I've always done it like this. so. Um, yeah, that's a good tip. Just leave it as multi. You can also do it to center or spot, but I always leave it as multi. And to go back to the menu, white balance is interesting because you can change your white balance. So you can, for example, do it to daylight, shade, cloudy, yeah, and so on. But I always leave it as auto white balance because personally, I think Sony does a really good job with their auto white balance and you don't want to um, mess up your auto white balance if you think like oh it's daylight but in reality it's like raining or something um, that's why I always go with auto white balance so the camera decides what the white balance is and so far I had no problems like 90% of the pictures were with the correct white balance and uh, yeah the next ones I actually leave like they are um, creative style is basically um, like your S log so the A6000 has no S-Log, so you, it's a bit different to do color grading. It's of course still possible, but um, with Creative Style, you can, for example, change your how your view looks. For example, neutral, clear, vivid, standard. And as you can see right here, I've changed it a bit. So um, with neutral, I was able to like make it a bit more gray and in post-production I'm more able to like get more out of the uh, shadows and highlights and when I do more saturation it looks more natural in my opinion or it looks to make it simple it looks a bit cooler so um, these are my um, creative style settings for neutral but um, I don't really do a lot of video anyway I record with my iPhone so I always leave it as standard and one good tip for me is Always check your creative style before you photoshoot because sometimes you just um, 
yeah, change it randomly. And then uh, I had a photo shoot once, and this was one of my first. I had it to neutral, and um, when I was back home, I realized, oh, the whole pictures were so great. <laughs> um, yeah, we still uh, did some good pictures. It didn't look too bad, but it's something to bear in mind. And that was when I was starting photo shoots. It's something uh, you learn from. So if you mess up, sometimes just learn from every mistake and uh, don't um, just stop. Keep going and uh, learn from your mistakes. And for the, your next page, you have like, hi ISO, I, I just leave this everything as normal. For smile and face detection, I just leave this as face detection on um, because then my uh, images where I have a photo shoot with a model, the camera also locks onto her face or his face. And this is why I have it on face detection on. Uh, you can also do um, like the eye detection but you can only do it in single shot mode. So basically you have to go into single shot AF, but then it can happen that your picture's out of focus because the model is also moving a bit. So that's why I leave it uh, just as face detection and I have no problems so far and it's really helpful. And on the next side, you have all the other options like steady shot, uh, but this camera has no steady shot, so, or this lens. So you cannot really do much, but if you have like a lens which has steady shot, you can enable it to use its steady shot. On your next side, you have more options like wind noise reductions. And this was really it, like for my camera settings. Yeah, the most important thing is that you always check, do you uh, enable 24 megapixels, worn JPEG that you have for your creative style that you chose on standard that you make sure your pictures are always like uh, set to normal because it can happen so fast that you mess up with your settings, especially you can just press around some buttons and it goes back to normal. So every time on your photo shoot or in general, if you do pictures, always check before is everything correct? Are my settings good? And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other video ideas or every, anything you want to know about Sony cameras, you can leave it down in the comments below. There will be definitely more content coming soon for you. And yeah, it was a lot of fun doing this video. I had a lot of fun because uh, yeah, it's something different on my YouTube channel, uh, but I want to do more content like this. So yeah, guys, you can of course subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Instagram. All the links are down below. And yeah, take care guys and see you next time.